stuff. It's so super nice. exciting. So if you do want to come down and teach a class here or a workshop here, it's available, you know, which is really nice. So we're wanting to get some people certified to take over some classes here. I, mean, I like, as the founder of the program, I like to empower the new teachers who are certified to lead the classes and let them kind of like run with the program. So I get them set up in the studios and then um, stay very active and involved in supporting the program to grow. So I come in and teach the trainings and the workshops. I'm available to do workshops as well, which is kind of a promotional tool for you and the studio. And then as much as possible, I try to be like more hands-off and let you guys teach as much or as little as you want. With the aerial yoga playground program, it's a little bit different than traditional yoga, than traditional aerial, than traditional aerial yoga. So aerial yoga play is something that I created as part of the Kuala playground. I usually like to start with just a little bit of history to kind of get an idea of what's the evolution that this practice came about. Feel free to come join us, John. Thank you. And we won't talk, talk for like a whole long time. I really like to get in the swing of practice. We have so much good information to cover in a seemingly short period of time. You know, learning this program over, to, over a weekend is pretty intensive, and so it's pretty full on. Um, what is nice about having the training uh, from 12 to 6 is adding the intro workshops where you can assist. So this is part of the training regimen is to experience a live class where you can participate, where you can have a little hands-on with people, where you can watch the sequences in action that we learn. And my goal after the weekend is for you guys to feel comfortable teaching a basic class. So an intro class, beginner class, right? After that, after you master the basics, then you can really focus on inter integrating some more of the intermediate and advanced poses. But if you feel comfortable after leaving here teaching an hour basic class, I'll be happy. And then from there, it's just practice. You don't have to do anything, but just really want to get in the swing of practice as much as possible. Uh, these swings are super special. We'll go over the equipment and talk about what's the difference between this yoga swing, which is something that I make. I um, designed this one um, to be a little bit different than normal swings. It's all based in sacred geometry. It fits the body differently. The materials are really high quality. It feels different on your body. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more inviting for people and uh, comfortable for them to go a little bit deeper into the practice. That's, that's been the experience. That's why I made them. I've been using different forms of yoga swings for about 15 years. And I just made it better. You know, it's like the swings have been around for hundreds of years on playgrounds. And it's just, you know, got a hang from two points, but um, this is when you get in the swing and really notice that there's something special about them. And so we really want to distinguish this as aerial yoga play. So I really encourage you to, um, with the training, to stick to the name. It's really quite easy for people to call it aerial or aerial yoga, but aerial yoga play is its own branding. I really like the idea of having a playful element to it. And play can have a few different connotations, which I really like too. It's like play is like explore and experience life. Just play with it like that. And then play, of course, is about having more fun than kind of like the hard body boot camp, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of why I started building the Quantum Playgrounds about 10 years ago. It was kind of like a little rebellion to all of that, you know, tightness that people are encouraging in their bodies. But we're, we're encouraging openness. So open, align, and release is the tag that I use for aerial yoga play. And uh, these two are in town to do the second module that I just created. I'm super excited to launch the new AirX program. So just to let you guys know, there is a continuation. Um, there's, a, there's various levels in which we can expand and build and advance. So Aerial Yoga RX is the second module, which is once you learn the nuts and bolts, the practice, which is what we're doing this weekend, then we get to learn the application and more the regenerative therapeutics of how can we use the swing to really help the body heal, to recover from injury, and to open up the body field. So I work a lot with uh, the healing arts and people with uh, current illnesses and injury, and it's been incredibly helpful. So the name Aerial Yoga Play didn't really quite capture that you know uh, healing component, and so AirX, A-Y-R-X, Aerial Yoga RX is the new branding and the new the next, the next level, if you're interested in taking it to that place, then it is available, which is really great. So we're offering the first retreat training uh, next week with the ARX. So it's all just launched January 1st. Next week. Mm -hmm. So I can take it right after. You could. Yeah. You could. You could.
jump right in. You just, come, you just get to come live with me because it's actually at my house in Davis. So we're just totally hunkering down in retreat mode. It's really fun. So yeah, so after module two, um, next year I'll create module three, which is the sacred geometrics, which I'm, te I'm teaching the advanced metaphysics of this way. And understanding the total force field and the Merkabala and working with the microcosmic orbit and um, spiral dynamics and like understanding electron spins and all this other stuff. That is super exciting. But it's like the graduate level course, you know, we're in high school right now and then college and that will be graduate level, which will be just to know like the vision of why I create this and how the quantum playground wraps around into the swings. The swings are really great because they are so multidimensional, you know, it's like we get to move in space and so we have that freedom in the body. Um, I really love the swings because they weigh six pounds. <laughs> They fit a cute little bag, and you can take it with you anywhere. You can hang them anywhere. You know, I love playing outside. Uh, this whole idea, I call it renegade area where you have to play, where you literally just hang swings everywhere, which I have. And there's lots of funny pictures of me hanging from things, and you're like, oh, she's at the um, city hall. <laughs> but yeah, so the idea with the swings, as opposed to the whole quantum playground, which is a whole quantum experience, which is like a couple thousand dollars, a couple thousand pounds of equipment which takes a truck, which takes a team, the swing, you can carry your mobile bag anywhere. So I really like that component to it. Okay, so we're gonna learn how to get in and out of the swing today. We're gonna learn um, how to play, have a maximum amount of fun, how to play safe. So we're gonna work on the hooks and the anchors and the holds. This is all in the manual too, so we'll take time to sit and write, and we'll take time to practice. Um, we all learn in different capacities, so some people are kinesthetic. I'm a physical being, so I like to use my body. That's how I learn. Some people need to see it, so they need that visual cue. Some people need to hear it, you know, and some people need to write it. So we all have different ways of learning, and we try to uh, accommodate all the levels of intelligence. And some people like to have a little bit of everything. So just know it's all been recorded already, both in written form and um, in video form, which is nice to review. Which is kind of like more people need to be doing video training. Right? Like at this day and age, it needs to be a video manual. So uh, when I first started putting this together, I was like one of the first people who was doing like video trainings, which is just, you know, let's just record it, right? Make it available. So that's been done probably a hundred times now or so. So it's all recorded, but then you'll have your own as much as possible, as long as the technology cooperates. We will have our own archived training. Usually the video is just on me, unless you guys feel comfortable for us doing a group activity. And again, ask whatever questions you need and let it be a relaxed environment. It's nice to learn in these small groups. Usually it's like five or six people in each one of the trainings. So it is like a semi-private experience. And the swings really need that kind of attention, that level of attention. So is there any questions about the practice before I go over the equipment? And then we'll begin with uh, the yoga translations. Anything you guys want to ask? Yes. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just take a look at our outline. Um, so <clears throat> what I want to do is teach you a basic hour-long class, but I'm outlining it in a, uh, a two-hour form workshop, and we just extend some of the uh, experiences when we do two hours. So basically, uh, I want to go over every class, I want to go over the equipment, I want to go over the anchors and holds and um, how to really flow in the swing. I think it's really important that people understand that this is a totally different practice. You know, and when we do new things, it's so good for our brains. It keeps us young, it keeps us healthy, gives us a better personality for sure. But it also creates new brain chemistry or new neural pathways. And so when somebody hasn't done something before, they usually get really nervous because they've entered the unknown and their brain doesn't have any reference. And so we want to like explain that to people like, hey, it's okay. You know, uh, the first time is always challenging for everyone. Just stick with it and it'll get easier. And then I teach through repetition, frequency of frequency. So the more that we practice something, the easier it is. So then after they do it a couple times and then they have no problem, they're like, see, isn't that like way better than that first time? So it takes a little while to get used to the, the swing on the body and how it hits. Even though I made this as comfortable, as thick and stretchy as physical po physically possible, it's still intense. It's a very powerful practice. And we want to remind people, this is what we learned in the Airx, that we're actually bringing out the lymphatic system, we're turning on the endocrine system, we're resetting the nervous system, boosting the metabolism, all of this really cool stuff, all these side effects. But in the process of that, 
you also get like a, a big detoxification or a massive release, whether that be emotional or physical or you know anything like that. And so in a class, even if it's an hour long, you'll probably find people needing to take breaks or get nauseous, and we'll talk about how to handle those things. I always have like ginger chews or some sort of ginger candy on hand. Ginger tea is also nice. So if that kind of detoxification comes up, we can help them and assist them to move through that. There's water right around the corner as well. If anybody needs water, restroom break, feel free to take care of yourself. That's a no problem. Okay, so we're gonna go over the yoga translations today. Mostly we're gonna do some very light, gentle playtime. When we get more into the dynamic movements tomorrow and then acrobatics on Sunday, we'll add in some fun things in the workshops as long as our folks are up for it, right? We have to just respond to them and really um, let every person have an opportunity to experience something new, but don't like leave them behind. <laughs> Keep them in the loop. And then restorative shavasana at the end, okay? So if you go to page one, they should be numbered now. I finally figured out that the number on the computer. Um, we're going to go over yoga translations one through four today. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the, the kind of foundation of the practice. Um, these are all upright positions. So in the upright positions, you're lengthening the spine out of the pelvis, create space in between the vertebrae. You'll hear me repeat these certain kind of mantras over and over again in these little things that we share. So lengthening the spine out of the pelvis to create space in, in between the vertebrae. That is what heals the body space in the spine, everything else is happy. It really is amazing. I work a lot with lower back and neck problems, that kind of thing, and it works really well. Okay, if, if all goes well and we get through one through four with ease, we can take our time. It's really up to us, however how much time we need, we need. The bonus section is going over the restorative practice. If you go over the restorative practice before the workshop, fantastic. If not, we will cover it in the workshop. Okay, so that's day one. Okay, and then we're just gonna go over everything so we kind of get an, an overview. So on Saturday, we're gonna do yoga translations five through eight. Okay, so one through four on Friday, five through eight on Saturday. Now this is where we get into more of the core strengthening. We get into more dynamic movements that are upside down, so we do more inversions. And then um, we also get into some of the fun sequencing that I do. We get into the swinging flow, swinging vinyasa flow. We get into some flips. It's quite a great day. It's strong practice, but it gets easier as we go along. So today we, we kind of absorb the most information. So day one is typically overwhelming, even though the practice isn't hard. Day two, the practice gets harder, but we're in, we're, we get used to it, so it seems easier, which is kind of a trippy thing. And then day three, we go over um, so the advanced training is 9 through 12. And if we get through 9 through 12 with ease on, on Sunday, which is basically going to be revisiting a lot of the forward folds, but we get into uh, more of the swinging uh, sequences, the flying salutations, which is also really fun. And then on day three, I also focus on restorative again, where we really get deep into like the cocooning, and the meditation process so we know how to like bring people up and then bring them back down right so we land them and then if uh all goes well then we learn some new sequencing which is the black swan sequence and then the acrobatics so we will get done as much as we can get done basically the training is one through four five through eight nine through twelve and then if we're like really going quickly through it if we're like really jamming then we get new sequences and acrobatics. If we need to slow it down and spend a little bit more time on, on really learning the nuts and bolts, then we just pick and choose which ones we do um, for the acrobatics. Like for me, this is not an aerial class. <laughs> we can do flips, you know, we can learn it, but like you don't need to like master uh, the acrobatics by the time you leave. It's more like a bonus, right? But people want to experience at least one of those tricks. You know, when you when you have a class and you have some more experienced people, they're always like, oh, show me a trick. You know, so we give them some tricks too. But my particular slant is therapeutics, restorative, healing the body, and then dynamic strength. So we're gonna get strength, balance, and flexibility in this practice, okay? That way we give somebody a little bit of everything. 
Then we're going to go to the swing next. Um, now we just remain with the